If you're someone who's thinking about getting a new piercing but wants to know what not to do, then you're watching the right video. In this video, I will share you top five worst piercing mistakes you can make. Let's begin. Mistake number one and the really important one is getting pierced with a gun. Now gun piercings are extremely painful. They're not sanitary. And of course, they're not proper to getting a piercing. It's just using blunt force trauma, which that means is the earring is what you're getting pierced with. Nothing else. It's really jabbing that earring through your ear. As you know, blunt force trauma can cause damage to your tissue and it can cause excessive scarring. So it's really bad. And if you're curious to be like, it's not a big deal, nothing can go wrong. Let me remind you what gun piercings gone wrong look like. Roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not do that, please. I'm not trying to get nightmares again. Mistake number two is being impatient. Now, a lot of times when people get piercings, they want to immediately just switch it right after. It can cause a lot of problems if it's not ready to be switched out yet and it's not fully healed. It can cause a lot of problems like irritation, inflammation, reactions to using crappy metals, or even worse, an infection, which we do not want. So be patient. Remember, piercings generally take about six to nine months for it to heal. Everyone's body is different. Everyone heals differently. But hey, if you do want to switch out your jewelry fast, we got a really cool option to use. It's our pushback jewelry. It's fly in the back and the tops are interchangeable. So if you're tired of piercing look, you just buy and change out the top really quickly, really easily is what we use in our piercings to use. It's safe to do, so I can irritate you. All you're doing is changing the top. So let's say I have an ear piercing and hey, I'm tired of this stud. I can put a flower in there. I can put a trinity in there. I can put a cluster in there, etc. So all these pieces are interchangeable and you can switch them on and off. It's just super easy to do and really convenient. And that's an option you can do. Number three is touching with it or playing with it. Number one is you're putting more foreign bacteria onto the area, which can cause irritation, inflammation, of course, again, if not worse, infections. Just that movement and playing with it is causing a lot of friction to the area. It can cause problems like piercing bumps. You do not want to touch with it. You don't want to play with it. Just leave it the hell alone. While you're playing with it, you're literally asking to get piercing bumps, which are horrible to do with. They're a pain in the butt. They look ugly, they look disgusting, and they're just a pain to deal with. So don't do that. Mistake number four is not cleaning it properly. Number one is the solution used. Alcohol, peroxide, essential oils, creams, lotions, serums, potions, all disregard that. All you want to use is a saline wound wash. Super easy to use. You can spray on a Q-tip or you can spray on the piercing directly. Morning and night, twice a day. That is it. The other cleaners are not intended for piercing aftercare. You can do a lot of damage to your piercings. The second part to this one is, of course, excessive cleaning. All you need is twice a day. You don't need to go four, five, six, seven, ten times a day. If you're cleaning it a lot more, you're causing a lot more irritation and you can dry your piercings and cause a lot more problems with that. So remember, excessive cleaning and using the wrong products, big no-no. Number five on the list is getting bad advice from a non-credible source. Hey, this could be asking you, let's say your parents, they're not experienced with piercings, your friends, your cousin. Maybe you look it up on the internet, like on Instagram or TikTok, people post like these cool hack videos or these home remedies that really aren't proven. So you wanna be very, very careful on where you get information from. It could be misleading, it could be expired information. You may be asking, hey, Haru, what about you? You have no piercing, how can I trust the information you're providing is valid? If you guys didn't know, Lulu's was started from my parents 20 plus years ago and I was actually raised and grown up in the piercing industry, working there on weekends. I was taught about sterilization, aftercare, proper facility procedures, and of course, all the safety products that need to be to run a piercing student and to operate one. So I have a lot of experience and I've seen tens of thousands of piercings. I've seen all the issues. I've seen piercings gone wrong. I've seen piercings gone right. I've dealt with so many clients through the years. So I've gained a lot of experience. 20 plus years of me working there as a kid all the way up, helping my parents run the studio. So I have a lot of knowledge um, built up into this mind. So I'm now sharing that with you guys. Just so you know, just cause I don't have any piercings, doesn't mean you have to judge it, but hey, totally get it, it's fine. By the way, I used to have my eyebrows and my ear pierced. I just have to remove it. I would say recommend going to ask your piercing studio, or we can also do is check out our piercing playlist called Beginner's Guide to Safe Piercing. We have a lot of videos shot on there for you guys talking about aftercare and the proper steps for you to take to be safe and clean with your piercings. We can check that out by clicking this playlist right here and go checking it out.